One of the other very big outcomes of the Industrial Revolution is that as people moved off of farms and moved to cities, and we keep going back to this idea of leaving farms, moving to cities, a process called urbanization, as they continually do that, what we find is there are huge advances in medicine. That's not surprising. What starts taking place is people move into city areas, they live on top of each other. As a result, there's far more to deal with when it comes to diseases and so on. And at the same time, we have the opening up of educational institutions and we have the opening up of things like hospitals and so on. Edward Jenner comes along and introduces to the world the smallpox vaccination. A smallpox vaccination is basically a shot that is given to people and the purpose of the shot is to introduce to their system a small amount of smallpox which used to kill thousands and thousands and thousands if not millions of people on an annual basis. And what he did was he came up with the concept of if we introduce a small amount of the smallpox to their system their body will build up antibodies to that, and as a result, they won't have to worry about getting smallpox. This is why you don't know many people today who actually have smallpox. It has been largely eradicated in industrialized countries as a result of this. The second big uh, discovery in medicine is going to be made by a guy named Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur, you've probably heard this word when it comes to milk production. When you buy milk, it very often says pasteurization on it. And that is because Louis Pasteur did a lot with uh, bacteria. He discovered bacteria, and then he found a way to use bacteria to actually get rid of bacteria, which co becomes the base of antibiotics. So as a result of all of that, the awareness of bacteria and the ability to use bacteria to fight bacteria, we now live in a world where if you get something like strep throat, you're simply given an antibiotic rather than dying, which is what largely happened to people 100 years ago that came down with something simple like that. So we can see medical science is going to advance greatly. Let's talk about the impacts, the overall impacts of the Industrial Revolution. The first one is the population of the world goes up dramatically, okay? What we see if you go through the history of the world, we see the world kind of bumping along until we get to the year 1900, okay? It took the entire history of the world, way back to the Paleolithic period, all the way until we get to 1900 to reach the number 1 billion. We are now at 7.5 billion just 100 years later, so the population of the world has gone up dramatically. One of the major reasons is, if we follow back across here, it is the farms. Once again, as people moved off of small farms where they were only growing crops for themselves and big agribusinesses came in and took over the farms, they experimented with ways of making more food to feed more people. So we have a big shift in the United States today. 2% of the people work on farms. Only 2% and they feed the other 98%. And as we know, in this country, we have plenty of extra food on a daily basis. Second thing is the standard of living. Standard of living in the world goes up considerably in industrialized countries for most people. Some of the farmers who moved off of the farms had difficulty as they moved into factories and were not making much on a regular basis. But the majority of people fared slightly better than they did on farms in economic terms. In other words, they made more money and their standard of living went up. And that introduced to the world in these industrialized countries, middle class. It used to be that you were either a farmer or you were very wealthy. One of those two. Once the standard of living starts going up for the lower class, we have the introduction of a middle class. In addition, transportation systems start to take off. We said before, because of James Watt and his steam engine, we start seeing things like trains for the first time. We see, in addition to trains, we see steamboats, okay? And we start seeing uh, countries laying out good roads, good road systems, and digging canals. Urbanization. Urbanization is just simply as a term. It just means leaving the country, leaving rural areas, as many farmers did, and moving to 
cities. In the United States, when they took the census in 1920 for the first time, there were more people living in cities than living in rural areas. So for most of our history as a country, people lived on farms, and that is not the case today. People overwhelmingly live in cities and suburban areas around cities. Environmental pollution is something that people had to worry about for the first time. Um, again, if you go back to the drawing that I did of the industrialized period, very basic drawing, one of the things I did was I drew smokestacks. We are going to, for the first time, have to worry about things like air pollution. For the first thing, for the first time, we're going to have to worry about things like deforestation. So environmental pollution is going to be an outcome. Education, in general, is going to go up. Educational standards are going to go up. Schools start to be opened all over the place. One of the major reasons for this is the fact that, for the first time, people need skills to work in these factories. They don't just know, need to know how to plant crops, although that's a very valuable skill, obviously. When people work in factories, they need to know other things. They need to know how to deal with numbers. They need to know how to uh, be managers. They need to know all kinds of different business terminology and so on that they didn't need to know before. So our education system goes right along with the introduction of the factory system. In fact, if you think about high schools, they operate by bells. That system actually was introduced by factories. People would start working at the bell. The bell would ring. They would go to lunch. The bell would ring again. They had to be back at their workstations. And so as schools and education started coming along, they ran the educational system very much like the factory system. Last, but not least, is a dissatisfaction with the new working conditions. Okay? What basically happened is as people started working in these factories, very often they were abused, especially women and children. And I don't mean physically abused, although that did happen sometimes. Some of these factories were actually equipped with whipping rooms for children that did not do what they were supposed to. What happened very often is children would work in very dangerous situations, and women would work in dangerous situations, and poor men would work in dangerous situations, would get hurt, and as a result, they would lose their jobs. The workers took no responsibility for the dangers that very often they put people in in these factories. Sometimes those dangers were things that occurred over a long period of time, like breathing fumes, and sometimes, literally, children were working around spinning jennies and got fingers cut off and so on, and those children would then beg in front of the factory for money because they would lose their job the next day because they didn't have ten fingers. This, obviously, if you come back up here, all of this ties back into this Industrial Revolution. It is one of the biggest revolutions or changes in the world in terms of the way average people were affected. 